Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Premiere Pro. Today, we're going to explore the Vector Keyer in Premiere Pro, which is the Ultra Keyer. It was originally a standalone product that Adobe picked up, and they've thoroughly integrated it into Premiere Pro, making it a great keyer. This particular keyer is well suited for highly compressed footage, but even if it's extremely well shot, it does a great job there too. It just particularly shines when you throw it at material that's DV or HDV or maybe heavier compressed like H.264. Here's how it works. In our timeline here, we've gone ahead and stacked our keyed shot above the background, which we want to key over. I'll select that clip, and over in the effects panel here, I'll just type in Ultra. And you see we have the Ultra keyer. I can drag that on the effect, and it applies. Now it's pretty straightforward. I recommend in our effect controls panel here that we go ahead and maximize this panel so you got a little bit more room to work with. First thing you're going to do is select the color that you want to key out. To make this an accurate selection, I'll usually zoom over in the record side here. So let's go ahead and set this to 100%. And remember, we can use our scroll bars. What I want to do is get in nice and tight, close to my subject, and click once. That does a pretty good job just off the bat. Another thing when it comes to keying, you want to be looking at the image at full quality. You don't want to see half the pixels because it's important that all the pixels are there and it's full quality. So you could do that by right clicking on the clip, choosing playback resolution, and make sure you're set to full quality for both playback and paused. That looks good. And notice here we're viewing this at 100%, so it's much easier to see the sharpness of the pixels. Now temporarily, I'm going to drop back out to fit, and we'll take a look at the overall key, but we're going to zoom back and forth there to really see this at full quality to make an accurate decision. Let's take a look here, and we're going to view not the output as composite, but we'll take a look at the actual alpha channel, and this shows us the key. So as we drag through there, you can start to get a good idea of how it's working. This is pretty good. There's very little problems with the actual key itself. Let's take a look here at the matte generation and the matte cleanup. And you see that it's pushing things forward of what's a highlight, what's a shadow. We can always twiddle with the tolerance here. If you're getting spots inside of it, it's looking pretty good by default. What I recommend is that you do just a little bit here with the midpoint. So if you need to sort of erode the matte, you could play with that midpoint to clean up the edges. And a little bit of contrast can also tighten up the edges so it's clean. That's looking pretty good. Let's go back and view that as a composite. And we'll zoom this into 100% and take a look at the high motion areas there as the jacket's getting pulled on. Let's play a little bit there. And we'll tighten up the contrast. You see we're getting a little bit of a ring there. So I'll go ahead and choke that, and you see we could pull that in. Now if you go too far, it's going to start to eat away too much of his face, literally we lost an eye there. You don't want to over choke. But if we can go ahead and put that maybe at a value of say 4, and soften this up just a little bit, it starts to tighten that up nicely. I'll continue to erode that just a little, looks pretty good. Let's play with the contrast setting there. Back that off just a bit. Good. You have a good balance there of a hard edge without too much of a ring. And we can play with the midpoint if we need to clean up a little. Looks good. Come down to spill suppression. And if you had any green spill from the background to your subject, you could pull that up. And that's going to remove areas like blonde hair picking up the green to the background. In this particular case, we had adequate separation from foreground to background, so there really was no spill to clean up. And as you're sort of looking at that there, the last sort of thing to really play with is going to be your controls. So you see there the shadows can pick up some of the problem areas, and we can play with the highlight slider as well to pick up any sort of stray pixels. That's looking pretty good. Let's play that through. You see there, even with high motion, it's looking good. Got the small curl of the hair there, and it's still working for us. Now, the last thing I would do here is under the color correction tab. When you key, there's often going to be a difference in the color balance and the saturation between foreground and background. This is because they're typically shot under different lighting conditions. 
So ideally, when you shoot, you know what you're going to be keying over. Of course, there's the ideal, and then there's the reality of working with producers and directors who don't seem to ever know what they're going to put behind a green screen situation until you enter the edit suite. So fortunately, with this color correction option, we could take advantage of fixing that. So here we go. Let's just pan this down a little bit. We'll set this back to fit. And what we're going to do here is adjust the saturation. Since he's outdoors, I could either increase it for a sunnier day, or in this case, I'm actually going to back it off just a little bit. And let's just roll the hue so it's a tad bluer. So you see as we roll there, a little bit greener, a little bit purpler, and you've got the option there. Now you don't want to go too far. Here he's actually frozen. So let's just back that off a bit. And I'm going to roll that just a tad greener since it's outdoors. And I could adjust the luminance to match the lighting condition. That looks pretty good. So let's just toggle that off and on quickly. You see a pretty solid key as well as color correction happening at the same time. And of course, you could do any other color correction effect after this. If you didn't feel that the color balance was right, just follow up with a color correction filter. For example here, under video effects, color correction, we can come down here and just work with our three-way color corrector. And we could start to introduce a little bit more blues in the midtones there and the highlights and the shadows. So we're getting sort of the color grading that we wanted to match the situation. Let's just toggle that off and on. And you see that it's doing a nice job there, while subtle, of correcting the tone between the foreground and the background. So there you have it, the Ultra Keyer, a very powerful keyer built right into Premiere Pro. My name's Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net, where you can check out the great forum on Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as Creative Cow's magazine with tons of articles written by pros out there getting the job done. Thanks again.